Yo, on today's Pop 100, it is Deadpool Method Part 2, where we're going to learn if Deadpool 2 can make lightning strike twice with its marketing cocktail made of two parts meta, one part postmodernism, with just a little dash of unicorn tears. Previously on the Pop 100, we left Ryan Reynolds and the 20th Century Fox marketing team trapped between the first Deadpool movie and its sequel, wondering how they were going to top the immense success of the first film and the anti-marketing guerrilla approach that doused the current entertainment marketing rule book in cheap booze and set it on fire. The pressure was totally on, and unlike the first movie, Deadpool 2 was now all grown up and a real-life summer blockbuster. Not to mention a summer blockbuster released merely weeks after Avengers Infinity War, arguably the largest superhero genre movie ever created. For Deadpool 1, we talked about the bottom-up nature of the Deadpool marketing method and how Ryan Reynolds utilized fan culture to create a groundswell that literally, like, willed the idea of Deadpool into existence. With the second movie, the big question was if Deadpool method of marketing would, you know, scale. Which, yes, sounds a bit ridiculous. You would think if you throw money at things, uh, they get easier, right? Uh, trust me on this. Constraints breed creative thinking, and as contradictory as it may seem, loads of moolah can quickly get you to mundane mountain if you don't have a laser-focused idea powering all the warp engines. Lucky for us, Ryan Reynolds bet on red and doubled down on the tactics that had worked for the first movie, utilizing his extra cash to turn the meta uh, up to 11. Meta? What's meta, you ask? Uh, well, meta is actually the magic ingredient. Meta is the idea that powers Deadpool, uh, the film and now famous marketing campaign. Greek for beyond or outside, the meta I'm talking about is the showing or suggesting of the awareness of oneself as a member of a, any certain category. Take it like this. So if I say Deadpool is a meta comic book, what I mean is that Deadpool is a comic character that is aware that he is a comic book character. The character takes this meta with him wherever he goes. So when Deadpool is in a movie, he knows he's in a movie. He knows that the actor Ryan Reynolds portrays him. He lives in two worlds at once. One foot in the audience's world and one foot in uh, his own fiction. So once you get the concept of meta and how it follows Deadpool wherever he goes, it didn't take the marketing team long to make that connection. And soon they realized that to promote Deadpool 2, they'd use meta-marketing. Marketing that knows it's marketing. So how did meta-marketing work with Deadpool 2? Tons of fourth wall breaking and reference of popular culture in our world. Both very meta techniques. Uh, this was shown in the pre-roll trailer in the movie Logan, uh, as well as that uh, now famous Bob Ross Wet on Wet teaser trailer. Also, untraditional brand partnerships kept the meta messaging burning hot, like Espolion Tequila, where Deadpool was named their actual creative director, Devour, microwavable man meals, uh, Mike's Harder Lemonade, it's one of my favorites, 7-Eleven uh, and Trolley, a partnership where you could choke down an exclusive tiny hands version of their gummy treats. You see, putting Deadpool where he shouldn't be, or with someone he shouldn't be with, became a strong tactic that creates a contrasting combination that's hard not to get the internet talking. Sort of like this cover of the 2017 holiday issue of Good Housekeeping. How they did that, I do not know, but it worked. Or this extremely serious music video featuring Celine Dion. Couldn't make that up if I tried, but she agreed to do it. And uh, I guess that's where the little extra cash comes in handy. Uh, in the end, Deadpool 2, uh, which cost around $110 million to uh, produce and create, ended up netting over $800 million. But they weren't done yet. Maybe my favorite marketing tactic of the last 10 years was done during the release of the Deadpool 2 DVD, where Deadpool 2 worked with Walmart to utilize maybe the most visible, publicly known, underutilized marketing space known to all of humankind. Yeah, that's right. The $5 DVD rack. 
overnight, Walmart switched out all of the classic bargain bin DVD covers with Deadpool variants from Terminator, Edward Scissorhands, Predator, Office Space to Revenge of the Nerds. They were all there, and they were all now Deadpool variant DVDs. More proof that in an era when we all have connected cameras at our hip everywhere we go, uh, that there's no really such thing as dead advertising space if you do something that's remarkable. Everything that Ryan Reynolds learned about marketing Deadpool would end up becoming formalized when Reynolds hired George Dewey from Fox to create uh, his own production house. Uh, the house was called Maximum Effort Productions uh, and is now famous for the quick turn bottoms up meta marketing approach uh, that was in the Deadpool marketing method. But now it could break free of the Deadpool character itself and let this marketing philosophy loose on the entire world, in which we will talk about on the next episode of the Pop 100. I hope everyone is staying healthy, giving yourself tons of grace during this time, uh, getting outside as much as possible. And remember that in times of instability and pressures of the unknown, it creates the perfect soup uh, for pop marketing, as people need some freaking escape from the real world as much as they need inspiring, uh, unprecedented times messages. Well, I'm Joe Cox, the Pop Marketer. You can check out more of my videos at pop-marketer.com. And while you're there, you can sign up to my email, Pop Rocks, where you can keep up with all that is pop marketing in the news, as well as updates on all uh, my new content. Miss you, miss your show, and I will see you soon in person. But until then, bye-bye from the bunker, baby.